I am a plastic surgeon. Plastic surgeon, plastic surgery. What do these terms really mean? A friend of mine, a very witty engineering friend of mine, once said to me that a plastic surgeon is akin to a cycle tire pump. He says that you inflate what's deflated and deflate what's inflated. But jokes apart, um, most people think that plastic surgeons will remove tissues from one part of the body, perhaps, for example, the thigh, and place it on a wound somewhere else in the body and get that wound to heal. Is that what plastic surgery is? Some people think that plastic surgery is about beauty, it's about making people look more beautiful. Is that what plastic surgery is? So at the outset, let me tell you what a plastic surgeon is, what a plastic surgeon does, and what it takes to become one. The term plastic surgery is derived from the Greek word plastikos. The word plastikos means to mold. So what's the connection between plastic, plastic surgery, and molding? The connection is that a plastic surgeon can take tissues from one part of the body, mold them, shift them, and take them to other parts of the body, get them to heal, such that form and function can be reached. And that is why plastic surgery is called as plastic surgery. The actual term and the degree that one gets is plastic and reconstructive surgeon. So the journey begins after grade 12, and it's a very long and arduous journey. It's 11 and a half years long. You do five and a half years of MBBS, and you become a doctor. You do three years of specialization in general surgery or a similar branch, and then you do three more years in super specialization, and you study to become a plastic surgeon. So the product that comes out of a medical college after these 11 and a half long years is an extremely well-trained, qualified, reconstructive plastic surgeon with unfortunately not much exposure to what is known as aesthetic or beautifying surgery. In order to learn these skills, this doctor has to then work with other doctors who are super, super specialized, extremely skilled or very, very knowledgeable and reputed in the form of aesthetic plastic surgery so as to eventually be called a cosmetic plastic surgeon. Now, this colloquial term of cosmetic plastic surgery is unfortunately very often misused by a lot of people who practice under this umbrella and try and do procedures that enhance the looks of people. I'll try and illustrate what I'm trying to say with a couple of examples. Here is a young patient who was wanting to become an actor. She was told by somebody that, look, you need to enhance your looks, you need to look a little younger, so please go and get some procedures done. She chose a doctor who did a facelift on her and did a blepharoplasty on her, a lid tightening procedure. I don't think any well-trained, qualified plastic surgeon, even in his wildest dreams, would try and attempt to do a facelift in someone as young as 30. It's just far too early. So this is what happens, and the results are there for you to see, if a procedure is done by someone who's not appropriately qualified. But a similar patient, who desires a rejuvenation of the face, can undergo simple, subtle, correctly ordained procedures, like perhaps a thread lift or a filler in the malar area or the cheek area of the face to attain nice, subtle, substantial results. The point that I'm trying to make is that there's nothing wrong with doing plastic surgery. The problem is that you need to identify and choose your doctor correctly. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that you need to research your doctor appropriately. When I say research, the first thing that comes to mind is perhaps search engines. But search engines alone are not the way to research your doctor. Because all, as all of you know, all it takes is a little bit of money to optimize these search engines and throw up a list of names that come at the top of a list. What you definitely need to do is ask your doctor pertinent, relevant questions. Where has he or she trained? what their qualifications are, how many such procedures they've done, things like this. Let me tell you, no doctor worth his or her salt is going to get offended or insulted by questions like this. There's nothing to hide, so they will give you straight up answers. Today, there is a deluge of influences that we undergo. There's print media, there's digital influences, there's social networking sites. And due to a result of all of these, of these uh, influences, we sometimes feel that 
People who undergo plastic surgery are fake people. The first names that come to mind are names of, let's say, Kylie Jenner or Kim Kardashian. These are people who've undergone procedures, maybe lip fillers, breast augmentations, buttock augmentations, what have you. And they put it up on Instagram or they tweet about them. Just because these people have had these procedures, are they really fake people? Take a step back. Perhaps they really feel strongly about the changes that these procedures created in their body. And they're just putting it up there for the world to see, to see how happy they are. That means maybe they've got these procedures done for themselves because they felt that they wanted to do it. This is very similar to somebody putting a tattoo of some loved one's person's name on their forearm and then showing it to the world. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And in fact, that is the most important criteria why somebody should do plastic surgery. There are many, many reasons why people do plastic surgery. When I sit in the consulting room, I see a plethora of different people coming in with different reasons. Some people want to do it because they want to be part of a peer group. Some people do it because they feel that if they get the procedure done, they'll be, they'll be cool, they'll be accepted within a certain system. Some people do it because they think that in their professional career, if they appear younger or better, they have a better chance to progress or perhaps get um, promotions in their job. People do it for multiple reasons. But the point I'm trying to make is the one correct reason to do plastic surgery because you want to do it for yourself. And I'm going to illustrate this with a few examples. Let's say, for example, you get up in the morning, you take a look at your face, and you see a crooked nose. And you keep saying to yourself every day, I want that nose corrected, I would like a straight nose. That is the real reason why you should do plastic surgery. Let's say, for example, you get up in the morning, you look at your face, and you see a bald head. And you say, look, I'm bald, I don't like it. I want to do a comb over and comb my head to the side and not just leave them be, not have a widow's peak. That is the right reason to do plastic surgery. So when such a self-motivated person decides that they want to do it, the correct thing to do then is to choose the correct plastic surgeon and go in for a consultation. When you go in for a consultation, very often, you go in with a set of selfies in your cell phone. And you say, look, doc, this selfie, you know, I don't like the way I look in this selfie. But what I'd like to tell you is that the selfie is not the best measure to decide whether or not you should do a procedure on yourself. The reason is that the ankle could be abnormal. It could be taken from up there or from down there. It'll change the proportions of your face. The lights are uneven as well. So what you're seeing in that image is not necessarily what you are. The correct thing to do is to go to a clinic, get a standard picture done with the body in correct alignment, in the correct position, with even lighting on the face. Then you and your doctor should evaluate that picture together to see if you are a good candidate for that kind of procedure. Very often, we see a whole load of pictures of celebrities on tabloids and things and digital media, uh, and it's very, very evident. These pictures are a caption saying, so-and-so got so-and-so done, and so-and-so got so-and-so done. And very often, you see that these are over-the-top results. So does it mean that every time you do a plastic surgery, your results are going to be over-the-top? Is everybody going to be able to point a finger at you and say, oh, look, so-and-so got so-and-so done, or so-and-so got so-and-so done? That's not always the case. In fact, it's never the case if it's done properly. And I'd like to illustrate this point with a few examples, if you will. So the first patient that I want to talk about is this young lady. She has very thin lips, as you can see. And what most people at her workplace told her was that she appeared extremely angry and unpleasant, just because she had those thin lips. They th thought that she was a very terse person. However, when she came to me, I advised her that you will look better if you do a very simple procedure. And a very simple, tiny procedure gave her the lips that she desired, and her entire system and in, at work changed. This next young man had a weak chin. He was not confident because that chin was so retruded that he was always poked fun at. So when we did a chin augmentation for him, he felt so much better about himself that he regained his confidence. This next patient, unfortunately, had a situation where he would not be able to wear tight t-shirts, or he couldn't go to the beach and take off his t-shirts, or, or go to the swimming pool and, and swim comfortably, for obvious reasons. A gynecomastia excision helped him gain his confidence back. This next patient had a, had a, had a sports, um, uh, water sports job. 
she used to work on the beach. And after having had her children and breastfed them, she could not fill her bikini appropriately. A breast augmentation procedure helped her get back her confidence and get back to the job with a lot of confidence. This next patient wanted to lose the baby fat that he had on his tummy. He was not able to do that, even though he went gymming. A liposuction procedure helped him do that. The next patient was a fairly large lady, a middle-aged lady who was thinking that she would not fit appropriately into her clothes. She wanted to, to just structure her body a little better. Obviously, to improve somebody so large, one operation was not going to be enough. So she had to undergo two procedures, keeping safety in mind to achieve the result that she got, just so that she could fit into clothes appropriately. The next two cases that I'm going to show you are patients who had scars on their forehead. We can never remove scars completely, but we can do improvements for patients. This first patient had a, had a, had a significant improvement in the scar on his forehead, and now he's awaiting another procedure until the, the tissues get supple. The point I'm trying to make is that you can't do everything in one shot. Sometimes you need to stage procedures for the sake of safety of the patient. The second patient, of course, was very happy with the realignment of the eyebrow that she had. This last patient that I'm going to show you today is a patient who was very tired with her looks. She wanted something to rejuvenate her face and make her look more pleasant. A thread lift procedure combined with some botulinum toxin and a filler helped her to achieve that result. So the point that I'm trying to make is that all plastic surgery need not be over the top and overdone. You can get nice natural results if the operation is discussed nicely with the doctor, the wants of the patient are understood, and a satisfactory result can be achieved. So to summarize what I'm trying to say is that there is nothing wrong with doing plastic surgery. And plastic surgery should be done. What you have to keep in mind is that you have to do it with a properly researched doctor, somebody who you've researched appropriately and done only and only if it's self-motivated. Thank you.